Now, let us see the lecture number 6 of module 2. In the previous lecture, that is lecture number 5, we saw the various definitions of the various type of stabilities and their the different sub classification again with respect to the disturbance means magnitude of disturbance, time frame and again the quantities of interest. In this uh, lecture, I will discuss about the transient stability of the power system and then we will see what are the ways that we can analyze. First one is uh, classical approach for the transient stability analysis and the various assumptions are made in the classical approach. First one is the mechanical input to the generator remains constant. Means governing system action is neglected. Means if your system here this whatever the generators your G here we are giving the mechanical power and that is coming through your turbine system again turbine system then governing system. So, this we are assuming for that analysis period this PM is almost constant and that assumption is valid because here the transient stability our analysis is concerned up to 5 to 10 seconds. So, by that time here the governor action or prime over action is almost negligible because the time constant of this is very very high. So, we can ignore this means your mechanical power input to the generators are remain constant. Second assumption here is the mechanical damping that is a machine damping and the AVR action is also neglected means the damping of the machine that is a D and the automatic voltage regulator action is also neglected. The synchronous machine model as a constant voltage source behind a transient reactance means here it is your generator. So, we model this generator with uh, some reactance here and this is your terminal voltage. So, this reactance is nothing but your X D prime. Again as in the previous lectures we have seen the synchronous alternator may have two kind two types one is your cylindrical rotor another will be the salient rotor type of machine where X D and X Q are different but however in the synchronous machine it is a axis that is a constant and it is irrespective of the D and Q axis components. So, if it is a salient then it is your X D prime and if it is your uh, cylindrical rotor machine then it will be a axis. So, it is your some the constant voltage source E of behind this bolt uh, this voltage behind this terminal voltage T and this is your sub transient reactance of this alternator then we can model in this way. So, the machine can be represented by the classical this is also called the classical representation of the machine modeling. Also, we know in the power system all the components they have some dynamics and they have some the equations and their dynamics are there. For your example, your network dynamics, protection system dynamics, your governor dynamics, your mechanical inputs dynamics. So, all are having the dynamics, but in this class, classical approach we also ignore the network transients means those are neglected. Thus, the static model of the network is considered only we have to go for the static model in this classical approach. Load also may have some dynamics for example, your induction machine load they, that will be also changing with the change of your voltage as well as the changing in your reactive power requirement. So, but in this classical approach we model load at the simple impedance or admittance form. The mechanical angle of each machine rotor coincide with the electrical phase of voltage behind the transient reactance. So, these are the five assumptions are made in the classical analysis of the transient stability. So, analysis utilizes the static equation of network and the dynamic equation of machine. As I said here the network just we have to take the static model and others we have to take here the dynamics of the machine here that is included. Let us see uh, a generator G here that is connected with the transformer having impedance X T and here these blocks are basically the circuit breakers means we can trip this portion we can trip this transmission lines as well and here we have the infinite system. Normally most of the analysis people go for either single machine infinite bus system that is called S I M B single machine infinite bus machine system. So, this is basically 
your infinite bus where normally this voltage angle is zero. Means again, what is the infinite bus? Why it is called infinite? Whether it's infinite in terms of its location, infinite in terms of its what is the infinite term? Why? So infinite bus is a bus which is if you are injecting power or you are extracting power from that bus. Normally, there should not be any change in the voltage and the frequency of that system of that, that bus. So, this is called infinite means you can draw effectively infinite power which is practically not possible. But if you are drawing large power and there is no change in the voltage and the frequency of that system, then we can say that bus where we are drawing the power is known as your infinite bus. So, here basically this is another system and where this bus is located. So, you can draw more power here at this bus means here the practically the voltage and angle is constant whatever the power you are taking. So, we have this system one generator the transformer and then we have the two lines line x here that is impedance is x l 1 and another is here your x l 2. Now, this machine as I said in the classical model we can represent this machine as E and then we can have a reactance here and this is your voltage source that is your x d prime. So, now your this bus this system we can represent here with this one. Now, this is a transformer. So, this this p m we have assumed constant, but this electrical power p is changing and it depends upon the system here the angle etcetera. Now, for the cylindrical rotor we can write the p if you remember already we have defined this p for any machines here is v1 v2 upon x sin delta and this delta is the difference between the angle of the two buses and that bus is the element which is axis is considered. For this case we are just considering here one bus here and another we are talking here. So, the impedance in this bus is let us suppose here now what will be this x. Now, this x component just we have to calculate. So, we have to write here now our v 1 in this equation is nothing but your E because we have taken here E angle delta of this bus. So, your this v 1 is E and your v 2 is nothing but your v and x is the total reactance of this whole system including your this as well. So, this is your complete. So, we can write now this can be simplified this P that is P E is equal to your E multiplied by your voltage that is the infinite bus voltage divided by the x d prime sum means the total x here as I said here is x and the sin delta basically angle here the 0 and the internal here angle is your delta. Now, this x d prime will be nothing but the reactance of your generator that is x d prime, the reactance of your transformer here this is this and these two lines basically this is in series with this and the impedance parallel effective impedance is series with these three. So, these two are in parallel. So, it is a parallel combination of the reactance of these two line this x l 1 and x l 2 this it is a parallel. So, it is a total x d prime will be this and then we can write the electrical power which is flowing out from this system here p can be related here and that is basically in terms of your cylindrical rotor machine. To see the same system if your machine is a salient rotor type of synchronous machine then we have also derived this here this is your E q prime V i. Now, here E q and the V d both are the different one means here this E q prime divided uh, multiplied by your V infinite plus sum of the reactances in that line and again here we have another component here. So, this is your delta it is a 2 delta and already in the previous lecture I have shown that. So, if your rotor uh, round rotor case if your V infinite this x and e prime are constant e prime is nothing but in the previous case it was e if are constant then we can write this p e is nothing but is a function of your simply delta or you can say sin delta and if you will draw then you will find here a curve 
half here sinusoidal here. Means we are getting some constant k sin delta. Means if your delta is changing, your the power that will be keep on changing. This is p. So this is called your p delta curve. And at the 90 degree pi by 2, this k term will be maximum, and it is called p. That is a p maximum. Means when it is degree or is 90 degree, then we can have the p maximum means maximum power that we can flow. So the area which is just this side, it is your stable zone. This and outside this is your unstable. Now, always what will be your operating point? Let us suppose your this mechanical power, this PM is this axis. So, your electrical always we know for the STD operation this Pm should be equal to your P. Then here we can have your K that is K term is here. This is your nothing but K that is a P max. We can say P max sin delta. So, this is a curve of sin delta. So, this will satisfy at a point and that is basically the intersection of this curve, this and this curve. So, this point A is your operation of point and the angle there is a torque angle a machine angle that will be your delta naught here. So, your machine which was here that is I wrote E angle here now it will be delta naught if your system is without any disturbance and is in steady state it is operating with this your previous case here this is your transmission system like this. Now, and this is your delta angle where it is operating. So, the we can go up to slowly if you have slowly and slowly we can increase without disturbing the system slowly if power is increased then we can go up to this point and this is normally called your steady state stability limit. But always we operate our power system much below this steady state that is a p max value because always you know there is a dynamics always there are change in the system. So, if you are operating here there may be possibility your system may be your an unstable zone because this area is unstable and this side beyond this pi by 2 and then your system will be collapsed and it is not possible to operate. Let us see the power transfer on a transmission line. So far we have seen the power transfer including your machine, transformer and the transmission line. Here let us we have a bus I and the bus J and we have the angle here Vj delta Ij and here the voltage magnitude is Vi and the angle is delta I and this Z of this line is R plus Jx. So, we can write here the Pij in this line with this formula. This is nothing. Here this Pij is nothing but your Vi that is complex into your Iij that is your Vi minus Vj conjugate divided by your Ij prime and here basically the real of this. And if you we'll simplify, you will get this expression. So, basically it is a Z square. If your R is 0, means your line is lossless, means normally R is very, very small. So, we can ignore compared to the X then we can get this whole expression r is 0, we will get this and this is 0. So, we can get this x, x will be cancelled and we will get the p i j is approximately v i j v j. v i into v j divided by x reactance of this line sin delta or we can say this p m sin delta. So, for the line or for whole system, this formula is equally valid. Only you have to remember in this case that this delta is the angle between the two buses where these two voltages. So, that is why here I write this P between two nodes, node means two buses. Here this voltage of one bus, one voltage of another bus divided by x between these two buses. Means there may be several, for example, here one line is this, there may be another line here, there may be some transformer here and then another bus here. So, if you are tagging this is V1 and V2, so the whole X will be the total of this line 1, line 2 and transformer. 
and the angle here is the difference between angle of these two buses. So, here x is the total x and then it is your sign basically delta 2 minus delta 1 or basically here delta 1 minus delta 2 what is the direction. Means, if your power is you are calculating the power is flowing here p in this one. So, it is delta 1 minus delta 2 as I explained in the previous lectures that real power will flow from higher angle to lower angle. So, this expression is equally valid and this is the case when r is very very small and that can be taken as 0 then this whole expression is valid. If r is very high then we cannot write this one and especially for the distribution system you cannot write this. You have to take this expression which is the original expression. Now, let us see another one. This ECD state stability limit that is the PM that is you can say V1, V2 upon X. It is sometimes called Vm, sometimes called v, uh, P max. So, it is given in the different books here. Normally, this Pm, I will denote the mechanical power. So, it is better to write the P max. So, it is a steady state stability limit. If we we'll differentiate that Pij in the previous case here, if we we'll differentiating this, that we have, if you are differentiating that, the Pij with reference to delta here that is again here delta just I have written it is nothing but the delta between the bus 1 and the bus 2 is your delta. So, always you must be very much careful what is this delta. So, if you are differentiating this then the voltage here is a V i V j and here your x it is your cos delta and this coefficient is called the stiffness of line or it is called the synchronizing coefficient of the line. So, this term gives your idea that what is the stiffness constant of the line that is very very important how much your system is stable. Also in the classical approach we made some few more assumptions and that is basically the saliency of synchronous machines are ne neglected and resistance of lines are also neglected in the classical approach as I said your two type of machines may be there here it is a stator and here is your rotor which is rotating. So, if it is there is a constant air gap then it is called wound rotor and if we are having some poles and we have the different air gap that is rotating in the machine here. So, here we have the different air gap here we have different air gap and this is called the salient machine and this is called the saliency of machine. So, we can ignore means here we can write this x d prime will equal to x d then we have to ignore the saliency. We assume that both quantities are very close, but normally it is not so it is very different. And also the resistances of the lines it is not only lines even though of the transformer we have to ignore and the other resistance of your synchronous machine is also ignored. Now, let us see the single machine infinite bus this S M I B the single machine infinite bus system where again the previous case we use here the generator G. This is your machine is represented by its equivalent impedance that is nothing but your J X D or X D prime here. We have to take the sub synchronous transient reactance and this machine is the internal here E prime that is equal to the magnitude this is a complex quantity. So, the magnitude angle delta with the reference to the infinite bus. So, the infinite bus basically denoted by it has the infinite inertia system inertia whole this system basically this is a system where this bus is there. So, it has the infinite inertia it has the constant frequency and it has a constant voltage. So, these three criteria basically gives you the criteria for the infinite bus and the voltage here as I said the voltage is the V infinity here I have written angle 0 and then with the reference to this angle we have taken this angle delta. This is your transformer this is your terminal voltage of generator this is a another bus where this is a line is there and it has a some impedance. Now, this machine here is nothing but a spring mass system here there is some inductance of K the total this we can denote whole this machine this is your infinite bus where this V infinite angle 0 
and this is another mass. So, this is just like a mass spring system and then it will have some and then we can analyze the dynamics of this system. As you know, the dynamics of this system can be written and we can solve the differential equation. Now, there is a two type of concept. If there is a three phase fault, let us suppose at this bus as is shown here. If there will be three phase fault, there will be this machine delta will be changing. Why? This electrical power due to this fault, more power will be flown. As I said, the power here is your nothing but your E prime V that is infinite, the total X completely X sin delta. What will happen now this is in steady state and this PM is almost constant. We have assumed this. Now this three phase fault is there. What will happen? This X will be changed and this X will be reduced. So, means more power is flowing. So, your PM is not equal to PE during this three phase fault. So, this to make it what will happen this P, this delta will keep on increasing because this value is larger if it is to maintain this P constant, this delta you can say delta will increase and now you can say delta is increasing. So, over the time period during the fault, this delta again can follow the different trajectory. One condition you can see if delta is following like this and finally, it is stable, no doubt there is a possibility at this point, this fault is clear. If the fault is persisting and its fault is not severe, so delta will increase and then it will be stable. But if this fault is cleared, so then delta again may come to this its initial value, maybe. Again, depends upon the whether fault is removed or not. If fault is removed, then it may come to its original value and the system is called to be stable. But this delta can increase like this till this fault is again the clear the system is the delta is keep on increasing and it is losing the stability because here if you see if this is your delta and this delta is keep on increasing then system is unstable and system is unstable then it is called there is a loss of synchronism. So, it is losing the synchronism operation and then we can say system is unstable. To see the system modeling again this whole the rotating mass here it has some inertia constant. This rotating mass we have the synchronous generators. The systems also we are having some damping. Damping means we have some resistances means there is some damping effect as well and let us it is a D and here this your TM this mechanical torque that is the mechanical power divided by this nominal frequency that is omega naught and this omega naught is nothing but it is equal to your 2 pi f naught and f naught is your synchronous frequency. This synchronous frequency is decided as I said it is 120 f upon p that is a how much you are rotating. This rotating speed this is giving your frequency based on the rotation. So, number of poles of machine. So, this is a rotating mass and again the two forces one is the Tm another is your T. So, your electrical power which is coming through this one going that side it is electrical power and the input we are giving in terms of mechanical power. So, at the balance as I said here again this T must be equal to your Tm or we can say this P will be equal to your Pm means your electrical power will be equal to your mechanical power and then it is called steady state. But during the disturbance, it may not be equal, it will try to equalize this T. As I said, the PM we have assumed constant in this transient stability analysis. So, only parameter which is changing your PE. So, the various here in this system modeling that will be used, this PE is in per unit electrical power output, that is the power which is coming out. PM is mechanical power input, the T is the electrical torque. Tm is mechanical torque input again, delta is the rotor angle and this angle is the angle between the two here your reference axis and your here rotor axis. So, this is the angle between the reference where you are measuring all these angles and this is the angle between your and this is called your torque angle or load angle, angle between the two axis here. 
your h is your inertia constant of the machine whole system basically here we are talking if your all machines are coming into one one uh, one combined machine then it is inertia constant of complete system or if you are analyzing one machine with the infinite system then is inertia constant of one machine so d is your damping coefficient as i said here this in v infinite is your infinite here voltage this is a terminal of this generator this is the x prime that is a transient reactance of synchronous machine and here is e is the behind the transient reactance so the whatever the power that is here is coming out again this will be equal to your pm in the steady state this xl this include your the transformer and the line reactances as i said we had one transformer and then we had the two lines again the same example and here it was ef so this is your xt and plus xl1 parallel to xt2 parallel so it is x is the combined of the transformer as well as your the two transmission lines those are in parallel so for the transient analysis normally we use the swing equation let us see what is the swing equation under the normal operating condition the relative position of rotor axis and the resultant magnetic field axis is fixed so the rotating axis of the rotor and the magnetic field axis is filled a fix the angle between these two is known as the power angle or torque angle during any disturbance rotor will accelerate or decelerate thereby what will happen there will be change in the rotor angle so with the acceleration and the deceleration with respect to the synchronizing rotor air gap mmf and our relative motions begin basically the equation describing this relative motion is known as swing equation means during any disturbance rotor will decelerate or accelerate again depending upon the pm and tm balance means whether the tm is more means input is more than the electrical output then machine will accelerate if your input is less than your output then it will be decelerate then accelerate with the respect to the synchronizing rotating air gap mf and a relative motion begins and the equation describing this relative motion is known as swing equation if after this oscillatory period the rotor locks back into the synchronous speed the generator will maintain its stability if the disturbance does not involve any net change in power the rotor returns to its original position if the disturbance is created by a change in generation load or network conditions or network topology the rotor comes to a new operating angle relative to the synchronously revolving field sin equation can be expressed in terms of the second order different nonlinear differential equation as here h over pi f not derivative uh, second derivative of delta with respect to time that will be equal to pm minus p delta and that is a function of your delta minus this damping constant and then we have d delta upon dt basically this d delta upon dt is nothing but your change in speed so if we neglect this term this pd the damping effect as i said in the classical analysis we always neglect this so this can be neglected so we'll have the equation here like this now you can see earlier i was using this h and now i am using m so this m and h they are defined they are related as this m is angular momentum is equal to h upon pi f not and this omega is nothing but this del delta upon dt so whole this equation can be replaced and can be written in terms of omega so this m is angular momentum and that is defined is inertia i of whole system multiplied by angular speed and its unit is your mega joule second per electrical radian r degree i is your moment of inertia here the delta is your theta minus omega naught t and theta is angular displacement of rotor 
and omega naught is the speed of the synchronous rotating frame. Now, let us again I use this edge and how we have to get the information of this edge. Now, let us define the per unit inertia constant h that is h is defined as the stored kinetic energy in mega joule divided by the MBA rating of the machine. If you will see the unit of this is the unit is nothing doubt here the unit of the kinetic energy is mega joule. So, I can write here mega joule and over your MBA. So, this is your power this is energy and you know the energy here it is nothing but I can say MWH. So, here the total this is nothing but your second. So, unit here the mega joule per MVA or it is second and H is very widely used because H gives the what is the inertia constant and this kinetic energy is stored it is nothing but I can write here half I omega square this K and this will be equal to I can write half I omega into omega and this is nothing but your arm and here I can say half M omega and this is nothing but your G and G is your rating or installed capacity of your synchronous machine. So, knowing this M, knowing your G and omega that is a synchronous speed we can get the H or knowing H we can get M vice versa. So, the single equation can be written as in terms of H it is again if you are using delta in electrical degrees then it is 1 ATF here double di differentiation of delta with respect to time and here your power minus uh, this mechanical power minus your electrical power in per unit. So, here we are just talking about the per unit it is a divided by the base unit. So, it is a per unit always because this is in H in per unit this unit at all it is per unit. So, it is not in megawatt you have to write the base what you have used and base is of course is a MBA rating of machine. So, simply we have divided here. So, if you are using the delta in electrical radiance then here it is a pi f and then we can write this one. Now, the various type of machines are used synchronous machines I am talking and then the inertia constant is the different for the different type of machine and this inertia constant h here it is basically 3 to 10 second for the steam turbine generating system it is from 2 to 4 for a hydrogenator system. Normally, if H is large, then we say this machine is large. If it is small, then machine is small. You can see the induction motor. This inertia constant is 0.5 second means its size is very small. So, this inertia constant gives information about the size of machine. Why this steam turbine generator system is having high inertia? Because you know here we have this generator that generator is coupled with the various type of turbines different stages of turbines. So, they are also very high speed and rotating mass are there. So, the total edge of the system is more compared to the hydro where one the hydro turbines are there and then it is coupled with your turbine system here. So, it has a lesser time constant h means inertia constant. So, it is 2 to 4 second however, the steam turbine again depending on the size if it is very large then it is actually very high and if it is small then it is again small. Again in terms of uh, synchronous motors because we can use the synchronous motors as well. So, the average value of h it may be 2 again 2 second synchronous condensers if it is large then it is maybe average value is 1.25 and if it is a small then it is 1. What is the synchronous condenser? To understand here the synchronous condenser are nothing but they are some sort of alternators, but mechanical power output uh, this electrical power output is 0. Means if you are using here this generator and there is no here P e is 0 you are rotating to provide the reactive power only Q then it is known as synchronous condenser. So, you can either generate or absorb reactive power by this synchronous alternator. We know that by changing the excitation system we can generate or we can absorb the reactive power. So, it is acting as a some variable capacitor along with the inductor. See one zone it is giving another it is also absorbing. So, it can do and we are not taking any real power load then it is called synchronous 
condenser. Now let us see the physical interpretation of the Sung equation that is here. Means we we can derive this Sung equation in terms of change in the speed with respect to time, the derivative of speed with respect to time, this m value, this p m minus p, and that p is a function of delta. Again, this p is nothing but your p that is approximate the v1 v2 upon x sin delta. Normally, these voltages are constant, we assume that is constant. So, it is a function of sin delta and it is a nonlinear function. So, this differential equation is a nonlinear differential equation. So, here it is your rotor and rotor is rotated by the mechanical input and then we are taking the electrical output and this machine is rotating with the speed of omega. Now, if this P m is equal to P, what will happen? This component will be equal to 0. Means, if P m is equal to P, then this component here m d omega upon d t will be 0 and this shows that d omega upon d t is 0 means your synchronous speed, this machine is running at the synchronous speed, neither it is accelerating nor it is a decelerating. So, it is a steady state operation. Let us take if mechanical power is more, means here this is more than this output, what will happen? This machine will rotate and accelerate, why it is so? Because always we know this energy is conserved, when this power is coming here, it is going less, so that power will be stored in this here machine itself and how a alternating or you can say rotating mass will store the energy and that is no doubt in terms of kinetic energy means that energy will be stored in the kinetic energy. So, the kinetic energy will increase therefore, the speed of this machine will increase. So, this is the same concept. So, the if p m is more than p then this component will be more than 0. What does it mean? Your rate of change of speed is more means your this omega will be now more than your synchronous speed and then this rotor will accelerate or you can say it will be speeding up. The reverse is also true, means if your mechanical power is less than electrical power, means you are taking more power than your input, what will happen? The energy which is here in this mass will be taken out and then means kinetic energy will be reducing, therefore the speed of this system will be reducing and then we can say this change in the omega with respect to t will be less than 0 or the rotating here speed will be less than its nominal I can say frequency uh, speed of the synchronous speed of the system and the rotor will deacelerate or it will be slowing down. So, the sing equation for the two coherence machine. So far we have used H here it is H R M whatever you are talking about. So, if it is one machine here and then it is connected with your infinite bus here. Now, if there is two machines, means here you are having two machines and then you want to include and combine together, then we can say this two coherent machine can be combined and their inertia constant can be also added together. So, here it is your P m 1, another machine here it is your P m 2 and this is another here this is synchronous machine. So, if we are having two coherent machines like here machine 1 I can say G 1, here it is your G 2 and it is connected by a, it is a equivalent here imp internal impedance, here again internal of this machine and this is your infinite uh, infinite bus means that is the voltage and angle is constant. So, these two machines can be combined together and then again we can basically with this we can write a single machine here with the sum here equivalent and this machine is like this. So, here this is your now this P m equivalent and again the electrical power which is going the P equivalent here. So, I can say P 1 2 here P m 1 2 I can write. So, we can represent these two machines here like this one. If both are in the coherent means they are oscillating and rotating in the same speed. So, if the inertia constant here this H 1 here, here is S 2 and the electrical power which is feeding is P 1, P 1 and here is P E 2, then we can write this H 
one two will be nothing but h one s two over h one plus s two. We can have this one expression for here, and this your p m one two is can be uh, related as the p m one s two minus p m two is p m two here multiplied by this h one. So this is the p m one multiplied by h two minus p m two multiplied by h one divided by h one plus s two. Similarly, the p e one two this combined here will be the p e one here multiplied by this s two minus here p e two multiplied. Multiplied by h1 and then divided by here and the angle here. If this is the angle e1 angle delta 1, here this is the e angle delta 2. So the angle here the difference will be your delta 1 minus delta 2 with reference to 0 and then we can go for the equivalent. So this is again why we are going for this. If you are having two machines, then you can again go for this is nothing but your single Single machine infinite bus system (SMIB) and then you can go for the classical approach and then you can analyze it. So, for analysis of the transient stability for this single machine infinite bus system, we can use the equal area criteria and that is very popularly used. So, the equal area criteria is a quick prediction of stability. It is very quickly you can. Analyze whether your system is stable or not, following the fault. This method is based on the graphical interpretation of the energy stored in the rotating mass as an aid to determine if the system machine maintains its stability after a disturbance. The method is only applicable to one machine system connected to an infinite bus or two machine system. Means if the two machines here, basically, what is uh, one machine infinite bus system? You can see again the same example which uh, I explained earlier. One here, one generating system here. Here we have the infinite bus. Means this is also a machine which have the high inertia, means large inertia, infinite inertia, and where the voltage and the frequency are the constant. So it is only applicable for the two machine system. Means this is two machines. Or other words, you can say it is the single machine infinite bus system. So it is only limited to that. It is not possible to go for the multi machine system. If the machines are several and connected by the different transmission lines, then we have to go for another analysis. We have to solve the equations, the nonlinear equations, by help of several differential equation solution methods. So the swing equation here, as again I can write here, that is written by this one. And this P M minus P E is nothing but it is a P A. It is called the accelerating power. So whether P A is zero or it is positive or negative, it decide whether your machine is accelerating, your machine is decelerating, or it is in steady state operation. So this equation, now you can see this equation can be written as in this form. Means here from this equation, you can see I can write this d omega over d t is some constant integration of p m minus p angle here delta. We can difference. We can derive this equation, no doubt, very easily. We have to write the two differential equation, and finally, or you can say if you can differentiate this equation here, you will find this equation without any problem. So this equation gives a relative speed. What is this? This is your relative speed of the machine with respect to the synchronously revolving frame reference. For the stability, this speed must be zero at the some time after this disturbance. Therefore, we have for the stability criteria, this must be zero. Means we can have this delta from delta naught where it was operating to the delta. If you are integrating for that period, then it will be the zero. To understand this, it is very easy. Let us consider sudden increase in the power input. Means here, this is your system. This is infinite bus, where we have suddenly earlier it was operating at the P M naught, and then we have increased this P M one. Suddenly we have increased the power input. Consider 
the machine operating at the equilibrium point delta naught. What is the delta naught? You can see here. This is your delta naught. This is your delta variation. This is your PE. This is nothing but your P delta curve of the combined composite system, including your here this infinite bus, here another terminal, here your generating terminal, here your generator, and this is your transformer included everything. So, it is operating here, as I said, here it is operating because your mechanical power PM naught is this axis. So, the operating point will be your A, where it is intersection of this P delta curve with this your PM naught curve that is a constant. So, it is a constant we have assumed. So, this delta naught is your initial operating angle and corresponding to this mechanical power PM naught that will be at that point will be equal to your P naught. Means, your electrical power is equal to your mechanical power in the steady state as shown in this, uh, that figure. Consider a sudden step. Sudden step here you can see that suddenly it is increased here to PM1. Now, what will happen? Now, it is stable, this is a PM. So, your B point is the post increased stable point, this B point. Because at that point here, this PM1 will be equal to your P. Now, it is, I can say, delta 1, where it is equal. So, at the initial, it was a PM naught. It was your equal to the P delta naught. So, this B point is your another post increase the power is stable, but means so uh, just we have seen the sudden change since P m 1 is greater than P e 1 the oscillating power on the rotor is positive because you have increased the P m means your at that point your P e was P naught. So, once you are increasing your machine will accelerate because if P m is more than P as in previous slides I showed you that it will be increasing and it will be accelerating. So, your power delta angle delta will increase. Means here your this delta here it will be increasing like this. So, it is increasing. The excess energy stored in the rotor during the initial acceleration is here area A 1 that is area A B C D. Means here you will see, sorry, here this area, this energy is that is A, B, C and that area is you can say area A 1 is the stored energy of this machine that is A, B, C and it is basically integration of delta naught to delta 1. Means here is a delta naught means this curve minus this curve, if you are integrating from here to here, means your this area A 1 will be nothing but integrating from 0 naught here to delta 1. Here this is a constant curve. So, this is your P m 1 minus this curve that is a P and again it is a delta. So, this area is this, this area here it is written as this one. With increase in the delta, the electrical power will increase and when this delta is equal to delta 1, the electrical power of machine matches the new power that is a PM1, even though the oscillating power is 0 at this point, the rotor is running above the synchronous speed. Hence, delta and the electrical power E, e will continue to increase and now this P m will be great less than P and causing the rotor to decelerate towards the synchronous speed until again this delta is delta max. As a result, the rotor must swing past point B until an equal amount of energy is given up by the rotating mass. The energy given up by the rotor as it is. Now, what happens? Now, this from here it has to go here and your rotor is now oscillating. Once it is oscillating here, it has reached, but your rotor is oscillating at this point B, it is satisfied this, but it is machine you are oscillating. So, what will happen? It will try to deaccelerate and it may go up to this point D. 
and here again now speed of the machine will be the synchronous speed here it was a synchronous speed it started accelerating due to this mechanical power is more and it is here it saw that the pm is p then it will be retarding but the delta will be keep on increasing and it will be reaching up to the d and again it will be at this point it will see that your pe is more than pm1 so it will again retard it back so this is basically it will be oscillating it will be going back and the system damping will try to stabilize at certain point b so the deacceleration here back to the synchronous here area a2 that is area bde will be nothing but the integration from delta 1 to delta max here at this delta max what is happening the machine is not accelerating machine speed has it is rotating at the synchronous speed but that electrical power is more so it is integration between this and this so it is a p minus pm1 it is this curve minus this curve if you are integrating from here to here this delta 1 this uh, delta 1 to delta max that is a pe minus pm1 with, if you are integrating with the delta then you can see the total the resultant is the rotor swing is to point b the angle delta max at which point you can add these two areas that is a delta 2 to delta 1 that is a pm1 minus pe delta the previous area plus here from this area if you are means from the previous equation here basically from this equation if you can write this equation in the here means it is from 0 to 0 0 0 0 1 pm1 minus e here again delta 1 to delta max here the same equation what is happening now you can see this is nothing but your minus area 1 so i can write this is nothing but area a1 minus area 2 is equal to 0 this is the area which we have written so now what is happening from here we can say the area 1 is equal to area 2 and this is the case of the stability if the system is stable that must be satisfied so if the area here that is a accelerating energy kinetic energy here and is equal to area 2 then it is known as system is stable if area 1 is equal to area 2 and this is known as equal area criteria the rotor angle would then oscillate back and forth between angle here so basically your rotor will be oscillating between these two points it is not going beyond that range it is here again less than this and its natural frequency the damping present in the machine will cause these oscillations to subside and the new steady state operation would be established at the point b after certain time so this machine is here basically if you will see it is oscillating your delta here from here it is oscillating and finally it is at the new delta 1 it will be stabilized so if you are plotting with the respect to time what will happen here this is let's suppose your time this is delta means your machine here uh, operating initially at delta not when the disturbance has taken up means just you have increased the sudden input of the generating system what will happen it will be here oscillating and the finally it will be steady state at the lambda not delta not so this is basically and this damping is due to the system damping because there is some damping in the system and it will be stabilized and system will be stable but there is a possibility if there is a, again excessive change this point d has gone beyond this then machine will not come back and then it is said the machine is system is unstable so in this lecture we saw the transient stability analysis using the classical approach we made certain assumptions but it is very advantageous if you can form the single machine infinite bus system and then you can see the behavior of that machine with reference to certain fault in the system it is quickly giving the idea whether your system is stable or not without integrating the system means without solving the differential equation here with the help of the two areas we can know that whether system is stable or not in this case we saw that area 1 here is equal to your area 2 for the stable system but if this area 
is more than your area 2, the system is again this area, kinetic area, this inner area basically always gives information that whether you are at the verge of stability or whether your system is very strong in the sense of stability. So, this equal area criteria is used to know that whether if you how much you can load your system. For example, in this case, you can see your system is operating here. Now, now it is always advantageous to know that how much you can load in the system. Means, it in this case it is the PM1, there is a possibility you can go up to the PM2, here it is your PM2, this point and then if there is a sudden change here, your what happens? Your system may go somewhere here and then you are somewhere angle here. So, what will happen? Now, this area is the different area than what you have area here. So, with the help of we can know what is the maximum loading that suddenly we can put on the generator without losing the stability of the system. And this classical approach as I said it is limited to the single machine infinite bus or the two machines here this is another machine and here it is another machine then we can analyze and then we can know using your equal area means here area 1 that is your energy storage here that is accelerating. So, energy that is you are giving that is increase that energy is basically in terms of accelerating and here is a decelerating. So, in this lecture we have seen that only just I have taken only one case when there is a sudden change in the input to the power. In the next lecture we will see that how much we can load and at the same time we can also see if there will be any fault in the system here, there may be some fault here at this line at this end and if it is tripped out, then again hold your reactance, the topology of the system is changed, there may be possibility due to this fault, this circuit breaker is tripped and then we will see what will happen during the fault, what will happen the after the fault and what will be the system stability criteria, we can also determine what will be the critical clearing angle means at what time you have to clear your fault otherwise your system will be unstable with and then we will see with the help of equal area criteria you can determine your critical clearing time normally it is called CCT. So, to know the stability of system one approach here is the CCT means how much you have the what is your critical clearing time this also gives the stability measures. At the same time, some another approach is used that is called energy margin functions, how much energy margin you have and that is also used to assess the system stability in event of the transient faults, transient disturbances or you can say large disturbances and for that we have to analyze your transient stability analysis. Thank you.